All right, so here we have the azide anion and we need the draw, it's a little structure. Okay, so we have five, 10, 15, 16 valence electrons to work with. And I'm doing this in my head now, we've had practice with this. I have 16 valence electrons to work with as I draw the little structure. I only have nitrogen atoms here, so nitrogen has to be the central atom. So I'm just gonna place one nitrogen atom there as the central atom. Start out with a single bond between them, and then start filling octets for the atoms around the central atom. Okay, so now I'm gonna step back and take a look and see what I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Uh, this nitrogen atom has an octet. He's happy, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, but this one does not. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna put a double bond here. Every time I add an additional bond, I need to erase a lone pair. I'm gonna add a double bond here. Erase a lone pair. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, have an octet here, 2, 4, 6, 8, octet here, 2, 4, 6, 8, octet here. This is a, an anion, so I need to show that there is a net charge, so I place it within brackets with the negative one sign, uh, uh, superscript there, all right? So our Lewis structure is done. Again, remember, Lewis structures are just two-dimensional representations. Uh, so we are going to start moving towards the three-dimensional view. And let's identify our central atom here, and let's figure out how many electron domains it has around it. Well, each one of these, even though this is a double bond, only counts as one electron domain. So I've got one, two. Two electron domains around the central atom. If I refer to my chart here, number of electron domains to electron domain geometry will be linear. Okay, so there's our central atom here. This is one electron domain, that's that double bond. This is the other electron domain, that double bond. Okay. Now, I do want to mention that the reason that uh, this electron domain geometry linear, for example, is different than this electron domain geometry from the previous topic has to do with uh, this idea of electron repulsion. What is the charge on electrons? Negative. So what that means is these electron domains, whether they're electrons in bonds or lone pair electrons like these here, or if they're electrons in bonds, they're going to uh, maximize the distance between them and other groups of electrons because they repel each other, okay? So if I only have two electron domains, what's the greatest separation that they can get? It's gonna be this 180 degree. So this is 180 degrees between these two, 180 degree separation. That minimizes uh, the repulsion uh, force between those two electron domains because they are spaced apart as far as they can get. For this arrangement with four electron domains, this happens to be the most that they can be spaced out away from each other in that tetrahedral arrangement. So we, when we look at the bond angles, we, we don't go into the topic, uh, Alex's topics looking at bond angles, but I will mention it. This is 180 degrees between those electron domains in here all of these electron domains are separated by 109.5 degrees. Uh, for trigonal planar, that would be 120 degrees, which would yield maximum separation there from that electron repulsion, okay? So the reason that the bond angles are different and the shapes, the geometries are different is because of the repulsive forces on these uh, uh, electron domain groups. Uh, on each other. Uh, some electron uh, domains uh, push 
or have a greater repulsive force on others. And that, that's even a deeper discussion that we could go into. So what that would give us would be deviations. So it could be small deviations. Like, for example, if I have a tetrahedral molecule here and I've got uh, some stronger repulsive forces than others, well, the bond angle here could be different. It could be different than 109.5, could be a less than that, a little bit, 107 degrees or so. And as a matter of fact, that's what we see with bent molecules. So as we move to molecular geometry, I'll point out some of those things. Also, very good for you to know, uh, but again, not necessarily something that I'm going to be strictly testing you on, but I do want to make sure to talk about these things uh, as we, as we uh, come across them.